Hey there, guys. Uh, Josh J.C. Felto here for The Writer's Lens. And uh, I apologize, first of all, for the audio on this one. It's a little bit different. I'm kind of in a, a bit of a bind for space at the moment for doing this podcast. But uh, I wanted to do an episode um, here on The Writer's Lens for a couple reasons. Uh, first and foremost, these are pretty unique times that we're living in. Um, with regards to the COVID-19 outbreak, uh, otherwise known as the coronavirus. And uh, it's it's brought a lot of thoughts, probably a lot of convictions, and a lot of just uh, differing opinions to the surface, uh, not only in other people, but in myself. And this being a creatively bent podcast, this being a podcast that deals specifically in story, it made me kind of take a moment to pause and reflect a little bit about what is the greater story that's going on here? And, and for me being a storyteller, what exactly is going on here with coronavirus? So this isn't an episode about having the, all the answers or anything like that. But, but one question that seems to be surfacing in me is what is, what is the story that is being told right now? You know, what is the story that is playing out, uh, for the grander narrative and also personally for me, I mean, I talk about narratives a lot on this podcast, which is actually the second thing I wanted to bring up with this episode. But um, for the sake of speaking into the moment and just trying to, you know, deal with it as I am personally, as I'm sure so many other people are, as I'm sure you are, listener, dealing with this on your own terms, uh, I, I want to re-engage this from almost a 10,000 foot view as best as possible and just say, what is the story of this? You know, what, what, what is actually going on? So, uh, this is kind of an off the cuff episode. So I don't really have any kind of agenda before me. Usually I have a bit of an outline or something, but I, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit, like I said, off the cuff and just kind of share some thoughts about, you know, this whole epidemic with COVID-19 and, and what's going on. So, <clears throat> so first and foremost, the pandemic that has become the coronavirus, uh, you know, for the sake of not making this a political statement, has been so far reaching in a, in a global sense that we now live in an age where information can get from one end of the world to the other in relatively a few seconds, which can do one of two things. It can help this situation because information gets passed along very quickly, but it secondly can stir up a lot of panic. <clears throat> and I think that's the one thing that most people, especially here in the United States, are are probably wrestling with more than anything is the uncertainty and the panic and really just that spirit of fear about what is going on with coronavirus right now and uh, at this particular time in history. I mean, obviously, when 2020 started, I wasn't thinking about this. I mean, I'd heard reports of things coming out of Wuhan where a new virus or strain had gotten loose. And there was a very good chance it was going to spread, that the Chinese government had not suppressed it pos uh, properly. In fact, they were suppressing the voices that were trying to get the message out, that this was a very contagious disease, a very contagious virus that was uh, very aggressive in terms of how it was going to get transmitted to different people. So a little bit different than the SARS outbreak, a little bit different than MERS or the swine flu and things of that nature. This seems to be a completely different animal but still all the same, one of those quote-unquote invisible enemies that we find ourselves up against in a, in a time such as this. And naturally, as it started to break out and it started to get further and further in its reach, uh, it started showing up in different countries across the Middle East and then you know, ultimately in Australia and then coming to our borders here in the United States, uh, which again has relatively shocked a lot of people that A, it happened and B, that we're now having such extreme measures taken to try and quell and uh, basically stave off the, the spread of the virus, as it were. Now, I know this, this all seems to have the makings of some great science fiction uh, apocalyptic story, but I, again, I want to be as sober with this as possible. I mean, this is a real world thing that's happening. Uh, you know, ironically, I was on Netflix the other night with my wife and we saw that some of the trending movies right now that people were searching for were like Outbreak and uh, Virus or something like that. Like there were three films in trending that were all dealing with these contagions that had gone rampant in fictional universes. And 
And I mean, to me, it's kind of fascinating that even as we 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 try to escape from reality, we're still looking for reality even in the art that we uh, that we produce. You know, so art as it is is always a reflection of the culture. It's a reflection of the society that we are in. And uh, you know, again, what we go looking for, uh, maybe a lot of people are watching it because they want to see how the ending goes. You know, how do they eventually defeat the viruses? How do they defeat the new contagion? How do we ultimately prevail against this sort of unforeseen force that we can't really battle with our with our fists or with our fingernails or with a knife or a gun? I mean, it's it's a little bit different than that. That's why viruses are always such a uh, such a scary talking point <clears throat> in the world of fiction because they come up come out as if out of nowhere. And they are seemingly invisible uh, because uh, anyone can be a carrier and all their kinds of things. But um, but that's also something that I think we have to be again sober minded about is that not. And I don't want to reference any statistics on this because I, as much as I like statistics and things, I mean this is obviously affecting every single person. Statistically speaking, 100% of America is being affected by this by this coronavirus pandemic and. One thing that I, I myself, as I said earlier in this podcast, have been trying to do is really combat this spirit of fear because the reality is, is that everybody is being touched by this, whether they have a, uh, no symptoms or they feel like they're invincible or they're someone that is in a risk category group. Um, if they are someone that is... Uh, you know, part of an organization or not an organization, but a part of a community rather that could be at risk uh, or they know people who are at risk. I mean, friends, family, etc. cetera. Uh, this is pretty far reaching as far as the virus is concerned, but I'm, I don't want to say that with the spirit of, you know, strap up your bootstraps and uh, understand that, you know, the, the end times are near. This is not that sort of a podcast, and I don't want to leave it like that because the last thing I want to do is, is to leave anyone that I'm speaking to about this with some level of discouragement about the situation. I mean, there's a lot of really good statistics that are coming out about mortality rates being down, et cetera. But again, I want to stay away from that. I want to talk a little bit more about just the story and the narrative that's that's happening now. Again, staying away from politics. There's a lot of narratives out there. There's a lot of you know, both sides of the aisle are, are, are sort of jockeying for position about the control of the narrative and what's happening. But but I do see a lot of really great things happening as well. And that's part of the story that we want to tell. That's part of the story that we, we hope is being told is that at the end of every really good story, the hero triumphs, right? Like the, the good defeats the evil. Uh, the champion is crowned the you know warrior or um, or you know uh, heroine ends up winning the day and good prevails even though evil has had its day for a while good prevails in the end and wins the war it may not win the battle but it wins the war and I think having that kind of a perspective I mean you don't even have to be a writer or an author to have this sort of perspective but having that kind of perspective I think helps a bit because I mentioned earlier that a lot of the trending movies on Netflix have been about contagions and plagues. And again, I, I kind of scratch my head and I go, why would you want to go into that? But, but I think there's a part of us too that we, we want to feel some level of comfort that we have control over the situation, but also that, that something good is going to happen. Some hero is going to arise. Some, some incredible moment is going to take place where this, all, this whole thing even if it wins a little bit in the interim, is eventually going to be defeated. That we're not going to be sitting around waiting uh, as the last stand would be. And there's no one there to save us. There's no one there to, to, to pick up the pieces and, and to stand firm against this thing. And it is unique because it is a virus and it is a sickness that's coming over people. So it's, again, it's not something you're fighting with guns or with swords or bows and arrows and what whatnot. It's something a little bit more, I would say, I won't say it's more deadly, but it's something a little bit under the radar and more subtle. So there is added fear and anxiety to that because your enemy is not as clear and present as you would like him to be. But still, we want the good to win, right? Like we want the narrative to be that we're going to prevail. And so 
one of the things that I'm trying to rest in right now is that, yes, good will prevail in this and that there will be a positive outcome from all of this, even if in the interim there, it seems as though there is not. And I don't say that in terms of, you know, generic overlaying of the situation. You know, I, I, I've shared many times on here that I'm a believer in God, uh, more specifically as a Christian. And so my faith is my bedrock in that, that there is an ultimate win that's going to happen. I mean, and that's on the micro and macro sense. It's the sense of that God's going to have his day and that he's going to win the war. He may not win the battle. I mean, he wins many battles. Okay, don't get me wrong. All of you theology majors who want to come at me after this episode goes live. But I want to have that perspective that the spirit of fear is not going to overtake me in this situation. That the spirit of fear and anxiety and undue panic is going to somehow subdue me, rustle me to the ground and hold me there and rob me of the situation and what's happening right now. Um, and from a storyteller's standpoint, looking at the bigger story, great heroes, great characters, great, you know, anyone that you follow in a story that finds a way to not be gripped with panic, who finds a way to see through the difficult times or the gray areas, the fog, and, and has sort of the gumption to try and look for where the pieces will come together so that things will end up being better than they were. Like, those are the stories we follow the most and that we want to indulge the most. And and I've said this on other podcasts here, and this might be a bit of a tangent, but but our culture has really shifted quite a bit in terms of uh, entertaining the idea of darkness, entertaining the idea of the gritty or the the more uh, volatile characters, the anti-heroes, the anti-heroines, the the ones that walk the line between good and evil, and you're not really sure who they're who they're rooting for or against, and you don't even know if you root for them, but you really like them because there's something charismatic about them. And honestly, I I think those have their day and they're fine, and some anti heroes are very cool. Uh, I think, uh, for instance, uh, this will probably be showing my age a little bit, but Constantine with Keanu Reeves is one of my favorite underground classic movies that I like. Uh, but he, his character in that, John Constantine, he's not like a hero, okay? He's he's cursed, and he's just doing things to bide his time. He ends up making the best choice at the end of his story. But he's not what you would call the great hero. He's not the white knight. He's not any of those things. And that can be attractive in, in some sense. You know, Wolverine from the X-Men could be another sort of anti-hero at times. But what we all truly want in crisis, what we all truly are looking for when things or at their bleakest, at their darkest. We don't want the anti-hero or the anti-heroine. What we want is the, the tried and true, the, the white knight, the great warrior, the, the one who the, is the leader that is virtuous, who's going to bring people up, who's going to defeat that evil, because that's ultimately what we know it's going to take. And again, me being a, you know, a Christian, you know, I don't put all of my, my hopes and dreams into mere men and women, but in a, a sovereign and immortal God, I don't, I don't look at one person and say, well, you're the person I'm going to follow the rest of my life because you have all the answers. No, you pick and you find that as you go through life and there will be people that will speak into your life and people that won't. But without injecting too much of, you know, sort of religion into this, <laughs> into this episode, I said I was going off the cuff and I am. Uh, even at the most basic human level, I would argue that, that human beings, regardless if they're even Christian or not, are looking for that, that sort of pure hero, the one who doesn't have multiple priorities that they're trying to meet, doesn't have their own self-interest necessarily. We're looking for that person who's going to rise up. And it may not be a person who is totally all the way through pure. It's just that in the moment, they have the clearest vision. They have the, they have the best voice for the situation. And they're seeing through it, and they're trying to get us to the next stage, the next step that's going to defeat this enemy that we're all up against. Now, it could be you, listener. It could be you who's listening to this, that this could be a moment for you to rise up a bit, you know, share your voice, say, hey, you know, people in my community need food. I'm going to help them out. Hey, there's there's folks out of work. I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, give them a few extra bucks that I've had lying around for a while. Or maybe you are a person who's looking for a hand, who's looking for, for someone to to help you out and you're listening to this podcast because uh, thankfully we all still have internet or we still have our Apple phones or droids or whatever they are, are still all working, of course. And you're looking for someone who might be that hero in your life. 
maybe think about actually looking for that person instead of trying to see how you can just continue to scrape at whatever you're doing. You know, scraping away at something or or scavenging or just, you know, getting by at the, at the least amount of effort possible. But actually now in this moment of crisis, people are extending hands looking for people that need help. And if you're one of those people, look for one of those folks that are extending it and see where that goes. Um, because in any great story, you see that. You see great heroes emerging that are ready to take on the moment, that are ready to, to take on whomever and whatever is standing in there that is evil and is, and is, uh, is trying to cause such a panic or fear in all, of the, all the populace. Now, again, in, in today's culture, this is a little bit more difficult because when we say good and evil, people have varying worldviews on that. They have varying vantage points that they're coming from. And this is another reason why I, I'm, I wouldn't declare myself rather a humanist or, or an atheist or anything because we have to have some sort of objective good and evil to appeal to. We just, we, we have to have that. So uh, when I say good and evil, yes, I'm speaking from my own worldview, but there is a human conscious as well that we're still appealing to, that there is something good and it's, it's, it's bigger than myself and it's outside of myself even. You know, because I, I can't be the ultimate arbiter of what's good and evil in my life. I, I can't do that. I want to be. Okay, there's a part of me that wants to be, but I can't do it all myself. I mean, another thing about the great heroes, I didn't, again, I didn't know that this episode was going to talk about heroes necessarily, but great heroes are those that recognize both the small and the big problems, right? They, they recognize their own problems and they look at the problems of those who are the many, and they weigh them and they look at them and they say, well, what, what, is, what is asked of me in this moment? And ultimately, they're just really great servants, right? We often think of heroes and people in the moment uh, battling things like this. And we think of them as, as being folks that are really out for their own glory. No, those are the anti-heroes. Those are the anti-heroines that really have their own interests in mind. The really great heroes are going to be the ones that don't have their just themselves. Uh, they're not just in it to win it for themselves. They're trying to win it for everybody. So I, I find that always to be uh, something that I look for in these moments of crisis or even in stories that I'm reading, I guess, which is, I guess, totally what I'm trying to get at is that in the great stories, I'm looking for those characteristics. I'm looking for those intangible traits because those are the things that make for really, really great stories, make for really great characters. Yes, you want them to have vulnerabilities. Yes, you want them to have weaknesses because we all do. But at the end of the day, I want my hero to be the hero that he or she is called to be, um, that they are going to completely push back against whatever evil or temptation or whatever it is that's coming at them. And, and honestly, I think with something like this in our culture and something like this happening, this might be a way of just kind of coming back to the reality of that there is evil in the world and there's good in the world. And there is a definitive line between that, right? There isn't so much of all this postmodern gray area that we've kind of trampled ourselves in or we've trampled into or we've we've slipped into after so many years of kind of playing around with the idea of it. Maybe this is that moment when our culture here in America specifically starts to say, look, um, this idea of good and evil, it's, it's not always gray necessarily. It really does have a line in the sand. People can do good things. They can do evil things. People do walk that line, of course, of doing good or doing evil. But the question is now... Um, you know, can we look at this as a grander story where the good is going to overcome the evil and we want those heroes to rise up who are actually doing the good for everyone else, that they're being the lead servants in all of this. So that's my encouragement, my, my, my sort of 10,000 foot view on this as a writer and, and looking at this whole thing and just seeing the bigger picture. And then also just from a, a personal standpoint, like I said, trying to combat the spirit of fear because that's what all the great heroes do is they... they they're, they try not to give into that spirit of fear and panic and anxiety. Trying to cut through all the haze, cut through all the static. Don't listen to every single voice that comes into your head. These are, these are the moments where leaders and great servants rise up and say, yeah, there's a lot of troubled times ahead, but so what? Right? So what? It's not like any other day. Okay? I mean, it's a little bit unique situation, but we are unique in that we can, we can defeat it. We can prevail. So, so those are, those are my thoughts here, kind of an off the cuff episode. I, I hope you uh, found some encouragement, not just we're entertained by that here on the writer's lens. 
And I'm going to leave it with one more thing here as I'm talking about this and the story that we're telling because I, I do look down the, the road and the horizon and just thinking about what it's going to be like when people start going back to work, when bars open, when restaurants open, the parties that people are going to try and throw, the, the, you know, the summer's coming here in Midwest, in the Midwest. That's always a time for glee because people are going to be outdoors again. It's going to be fun. Uh, those are things to look forward to. Right now, it's a little dreary. It's a little drab. It's that wet season of springtime. But man, when that summer hits and, and it's going to come eventually, it will come, right? That's another thing to remember is that as the story progresses, it will come. Uh, it might even come sooner than that. I don't know. But uh, when it does come, it's going to be really great to finally get out there and, and you know kind of be beyond this blanket of all this kind of confusion that's going on and sort of the fear and panic that's gripping people by the ankles and also just around our, our necks even, uh, trying to keep us paralyzed to the situation. So uh, lastly, sorry again for that quick tangent there, but lastly, uh, my last point is is that here on The Writer's Lens, I am going to continue this this podcast. It's going to be a little bit less now, probably more like bi-weekly. I've been kind of moving that direction the last couple months anyway, in case you didn't notice or notice. And I'm going to be unveiling a brand new podcast called The Narrative Wars. And it's it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. It's definitely leaning more into the voice that I feel like uh, you know I should be moving into uh, in my own creative uh, pursuits. I'm going to be talking about all the different narratives out there. Now, I've shared narrative wars on this podcast before. So I am going to be transferring content over to that podcast. So there's going to be quite a few episodes available right from the get-go. So if you want to get over there and subscribe right away, feel feel welcome to do that. I'll be launching it probably next week. Um, but again, that's where I feel my voice is being led at this point, is to talk about narratives and um, the different ones that are out there and just basically leaving it to you listeners to, to make some decisions about what you think are the proper narratives to be listening to. What are the voices to be listening to that are out there? That's what I want to be speaking into. So I'm excited for that. And I'm excited for all this, of course, to eventually move past us as this story progresses. So uh, again, thanks for tuning in. Stay safe, guys. Remember to practice that quarantine slash social distancing that's been asked of of us uh, because it is important to do that, okay? I'm not, not going to downplay that whatsoever. This is a, a true situation for us to rise up and be responsible. Do not take it for granted. Do not take it for granted in that sense. Um, uh, because there will, there, obviously there will be pe people that do who just want to blow this off, that don't want to make any deal of it. Look, we should, okay? As responsible citizens, we should. So be well, stay safe. Again, be on the lookout um, as far as the next podcast and talking narratives and sort of big picture ideas as well. But that'll be a little bit of a shift here for me over the next couple of weeks. So again, this is Josh J. Sofelto for The Writer's Lens uh, and soon to be Narrative Wars. But uh, stay safe, everyone. Be well, and I'll be talking with you again soon.